Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. In my last video, I was going through Dirac Live, calibrating my uh, 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos system with the new Monoprice Monolith HTP1 processor when I discovered that one of my speakers was not working properly. Um, did some troubleshooting in that video. I thought it was going to be a tweeter that had went, um, not like totally bad. You can hear sound out of it, but it's not producing the same frequency response as the center channel and the right speaker. So in that video, I switched the left tweeter with the right tweeter, ran some more uh, frequency sweeps, and it's starting to look like it is possibly the crossover. So in this video, what I wanted to do is take one more set of measurements, but then this uh, video, instead of having the microphone um, at my primary listening position, we're gonna place the microphone very close to each tweeter and we'll take a measurement and just see how they how their frequency responses um, you know look are they the same are they different um, if they're different at that close um, you know we know that something's still going on and I got to do some more troubleshooting to see if you know the crossover is bad in it um, it doesn't appear like the tweeter is wrong or it's, it's bad because you can check that out in the previous video. But in this video, I'm just gonna walk you through my steps of troubleshooting so we can try to figure out what's wrong with this. Um, so let's go ahead and go up here to the setup. Let me turn this up a little bit here because it's pretty dark. Tell you what, I'm gonna put a light. Ah, there we go. All right, so now we got a little bit of light up here. This should help. So here you can see, I've got the UMIC one placed directly in front of the tweeter and I've measured it perfectly. Here's my measurement tool. Four discs. So I put four discs right in front of it and you can see it barely touches. I'll probably pull it out just a tad, but basically we're gonna make sure that all of those are equal distance it's right directly in line, aim straight at the tweeter there. And then we're gonna need to do some adjustments in the software. So I'm gonna see if I can do it with this camera without having to do a screen share. All right, hopefully you can see the menu system here. The first thing we need to do is come up to the top right and I'm gonna to go to preferences. Sorry, it's gonna be a little shaky. I'm trying to hold this. And we're gonna to need to come up here to the calibration files. And right now I've got it set to the 90 degree because that's typically when you have the, um, the microphone aimed straight up. But since we're aimed straight at the speaker, we need to go back and get the regular non 90 degree. So we're just gonna browse. Again, sorry for the so we're good there. So now we come up here and close. So now we've got the right calibration file. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna switch hands. It's probably a little bit easier to do this. So we're gonna come up here to measure and we're gonna click start. All right, so I'll do a screen share in just a little bit, but I'm gonna come up here. I'll tell you what, we'll just take all three measurements. I'm gonna move the mic over to this speaker. I'll move the mic down to that speaker, which you can't see because it's so dark. Now you can. Once I take a measurement of all three speakers, then we'll go to the computer and I'll do a screen share. It'll be a lot easier for you to see. So give me just a moment, I'll run those tests. Okay, so here we are back inside of REW. Down here you can see I made three new uh, measurements. I've taken one, two, and three. So number one, that's gonna be the front left, and let's call this near field because we had the mic really close. Near field, um, number two, is going to be center near field. And then number three is going to be front right near field. Okay, so we've got those labeled and I'm gonna go ahead and turn 
those off for a second because I want to show you something. I took another measurement too. This was um, earlier today. Somebody, one of you guys made a suggestion that it could be a toe-in issue. You know, um, if I would toe in the left speaker a little bit more, maybe it would measure better. So I did that. So let's see how that, um, you know, if that made a difference. So I've got the front left speaker with more toe in. I've got the, uh, I didn't do the center of course, cause it's aimed straight. And then I did the front right with toe in. So here you can see once again, one of the speakers, the right speaker is extending a lot farther in the high frequencies than the left speaker. For whatever reason, my left speaker is just dropping off really early. So let's go ahead and undo that. And so now we're gonna look at the front left speaker near field. And I'm gonna come up here to limits. And I think we can do fit to data. Okay, so that looks a lot better. And so here's the graph there. So I'm gonna make it a little bit easier to read. It's not too bad here, but I'm gonna to go to, actually I'm gonna click on controls and we're gonna do what we did previously. We're gonna apply some variable smoothing. It's just gonna smooth it out to make it look more like a singular line, more like averages. Just makes it easier when we get ready to compare these. So let me just go ahead and do each one. So we'll turn on the center, come up to controls. We're gonna apply a variable smoothing. And then front right near field, we're gonna apply variable smoothing. Okay, so now let's compare each one of them. I'm gonna come up to limits and we'll do fit the data. So that'll kind of put it in the middle there for us, kind of stretch it out a little bit. So let's go ahead and put all three of them up there. All right, so again, we're seeing the same thing. So let's take a look at this. <clears throat> So we got the front left. So take a look at this part right here, okay? So we're kind of zoomed in, which is why it's showing so high. We probably could zoom out. A little. Yeah, let's do that. That's probably gonna be, give us a, it'll be easier to see that way. All right, so then if I turn on the center channel near field, notice what happens right here, the high frequencies extend quite a bit further. This is dipping down quite a bit on the left speaker. And then if I turn on the right one, and I'll go ahead and turn off the left, so we can see pretty much the right one follows the same path. So the center channel and the front right are doing fine. The one that's still struggling, even though we swapped tweeters, is the left speaker. So again, to me, it's still lending itself towards, um, I guess it could still be a couple of things. It could be a crossover issue. It could be, possibly it could be something in the HTP1. Um, the only way to check that, I could reverse on the back of the HTP1, the outputs to the amplifier for the left and right channel. And so I'm gonna go ahead, I'll swap those. Um, of course, I'll power it down before I do that, but I'll swap those Maybe we can, I'll rerun the, probably what I'll need to do, take a measurement left and right, since I've already moved the microphone out of the way, swap them on the back of the HTP1 and see if the output is, um, if it changes. Because if it changes, then we know that maybe the HTP1, that left channel for whatever reason is kind of goofed up, or maybe there's some kind of EQ being applied, which I don't think there is. Honestly, guys, I really think it's just my 40-year-old speakers. Some of you guys were asking in the comments, is, are they really 40 years old? Yes, these are the original Clips La Scala's from 1980. Um, the new La Scala's are like $6,000 a piece, so that'd be $18,000 in a front LCR. Um, you know, I'm youth man, but uh, that doesn't mean anything, man. I'm not rich by any means. Um, so I've got the old school uh, ones I picked up on, a, um, you know, on, uh, I think it was Craigslist or Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, Let Go, something like that. Um, found those used on the used market. And so I was able to afford those and purchase those. So again, guys, um, everything I'm seeing on here is really pointing to definitely it's not the tweeter because the tweeter didn't change when we swapped them. You know, the right speaker measures fine, it measures very comparable to the center channel, whether I'm using the original tweeters or whether we swap the tweeters 
from the left to the right and the right to the left. They still measured the same um, in that right cabinet. So to me, it's still leaning towards that left cabinet. Um, I did try taking off the leads to the tweeter and um, you know, kind of try to clean those a little bit, but they honestly, they look spick and span. There's no rust on it. There's no corrosion. Um, they look super, super clean. So I don't think it's a contact issue either. Um, so anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You guys, a lot of you are way smarter than I am. Maybe you're seeing something on the charts, on the graph that I'm not seeing, but definitely let me know down in the comments below what you think the issue is. I'm going to continue to troubleshoot it, but I think for now it's just safe for me to go ahead and hook up the, um, the Martin Logans in here, the left channel, center channel, right channel, use my existing side surrounds and rear sounds and my Ford Dolby Atmos. Of course, I'll be using my JTR subwoofers um, and then run the calibration with Dirac so I can at least, uh, man, I want to hear this thing. And I know my wife, she was, she's asked me twice if the theater room's ready to watch um, Everest. And so I know she's itching to watch that. And so I really need to just get that uh, set up. So I think tomorrow, I'll go ahead and bring in those speakers, get those set up, and then I'll go ahead and go through Dirac. Hopefully I'll make a video for you guys of the process. Um, again, I'm not a Dirac uh, guru by any means. This will be only my second time using it, um, but I can show you kind of the basic process of it. Um, and then I'll go through the whole calibration uh, with speakers that are working properly. And um, cause I, I just don't want my, I don't want my impression of Dirac based off of one of my speakers that's flawed. I really want to, um, you know, have kind of a, uh, just as, as best of a, an environment and a situation as possible. So I'm glad that I've got um, another set of speakers that I can use in its place. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. I produce two to three videos each and every week that I'm sure you'll enjoy. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.